G'day everyone, Mad Matt here. So, uh, I'm playing with a starter motor. Now this one's out of an 80 series Land Cruiser, but um, there's many starter motors out there that have a similar design. Now, the beauty I like about these 80 series designs is they are serviceable on the track. So if you break down, and especially in a truck like mine, which is automatic, this is the only way she will start is with that starter motor. You can't roll start them or anything like that. So having a good starter motor is important. Now, this one has been giving me grief. And what I'm gonna show you in this video is, in my experience, one of the primary areas where a starter motor won't start, and this is the reason why, and it's easy to fix. Now, if you like this video and you like the content I'm giving you in it, hey, would you do me a favor and hit that like button, the follow button, and uh, the subscribe button, depending on what platform you're watching this on. So let's get into it. So. All of these bits and pieces here, you're looking at that and going, what the heck is all of that? Well, this is essentially, we call it the solenoid on the starter motor, but essentially it's a switch. Another word you could use would be a relay. Okay, so it's essentially a switch or that's been designed into the starter motor. So if you imagine the electricity from our battery is coming into this point here, okay, and then this terminal, I'll just slip this in here, sits in there. Now, 24 seven, that terminal has got 12 volts from your battery sitting on it waiting just to be used. Okay, so that that's sitting there. Now on the other side of this solenoid over here is another terminal. I'll just slip this in place. Okay, now I'm not assembling this correctly at the moment I'm just doing it quickly so I can show you in the video so don't take this bit as gospel yet all right so those two terminals are sitting there this terminal here see this wire follow it goes into the motor section of our starter motor so the only way this motor can turn is if electricity goes into that terminal does that make sort of sense all right so we've got electricity here waiting to be used this side, no electricity, wants electricity. That's where this section here comes in, which is a slug. All right, I'll take the spring off just to, to demo, demo you this. Okay, again, this isn't being assembled correctly. This is just so you can understand the operation and how it works. So the slug sits down in there like that. Get that bolt out of the way. Okay, see how it goes up and down? All right, now. This one's waiting, got electricity on it. So if we push this down, down in there, it touches that bottom contact. This uh, gold colored ring on the outside here carries the electricity around to this terminal here. I'll just show you on this new one. So this is a new slug. So if I assemble this upside down for you, help you get a picture. So that would sit there like that. So this is the terminal with the electricity waiting to be used. Okay, this is the terminal that goes to the electric motor. And this is the slug. So when they touch there and there, the electricity can travel between the two. Isn't that nice and simple? All right, but normal operation, this slug is sitting up here out of the way and it doesn't touch anything. Now this is where your actual problem comes in. Let me show you on on this other one I've got here, which is a old slug, which was giving me grief. So as you'd well appreciate, electricity needs a good contact to travel through something. So let's have a look at this. See the round circular wear point on the tip there? Okay, it's all, see how it's not flat? Okay, it's got a bit of a taper to it. All right, we'll have a look at this. Oh, that same thing, bit of a taper on it. Look at all the marks and pitting on that surface. Okay, does that say to you you're going to have a good electrical contact? Not to me. All right, so this, these contacts and that slug are pretty well stuffed and hence they came out of this old starter motor. All right, so I, I one of my favorite com companies to work with is these guys. Now I actually do videos for them and they do pay me for that. But these parts here, I literally paid my own money for them. Now they probably gave me a bit of a discount, but honestly, I, I, they invoiced me and I paid the money for a new slug. 
okay, from all 4x4 spares. Love their work. They always have great Toyota parts in, pro in stock at a good price, and their delivery is just ballistically good, and they will ship anywhere in the world. So check them out. It's, um, they're in Australia, but uh, you just Google their website or go to eBay, whatever you like. Like I say, um, I do do work for them, but uh, this isn't a sponsored video. They don't even know I'm doing it. Okay, so there you go. So now, back to back to the, the thing. So what's going wrong when you turn the key in your car and you hear click, click, click? Well, what you're hearing is this solenoid going. Does that sound familiar? Click, click, click. Okay, it's going down, getting sucked in by the electric, by the by the um, elect when you turn the key. It, 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 I should show you that, eh? Hey, I forgot. I'll show you. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. See these two little wires in here. When you turn the key, you put electricity down this terminal here, into this wire here. And down under that red bit is coil of wire. What do you do when you get a coil of wire around uh, something like this? You get an electrical ma electromagnet. And so it's the electromagnetic field sucks this slug down inside that solenoid and pulls it down. That's how, that's, that's what happens when you turn the key. Okay, but because this, the electricity to start the engine is instead of being like, I don't know, 10 amps or 20 amps across the magnetic field, you actually need to start your engine. It might be two, three, four hundred amps, which if you don't know what that means, it's a lot, okay? That's why we had big wires and big terminals and all that sort of stuff, okay? So, so that clicking noise is the slug going, getting sucked down by that electromagnet. Get in there, get in there. All right. It gets sucked down, but when the connections under those terminals that I was explaining to you earlier, because they're dirty or worn, because those connections are dodgy, we don't get the electricity traveling from this side to that side. Therefore, the motor can't run, therefore, the engine can't start. All right, how interesting and cool is that? Now, I just want to show you one other thing. I hope you're learning stuff here. If you are, just make sure you hit the, the follow my page buttons, the subscribe buttons and all that. So what happens down in here? Okay, so here's, here's the starter motor. That's the solenoid section. That's the engine, uh, the motor. Okay, it comes into here. It's got a little gearbox and stuff like that. Now, inside here is a ratchet mechanism. So if you start the engine and the engine starts and this can't keep up, it allows the gear to drive one way but not the other. See, I can turn it by hand this way but when I turn it that way, it's got like a worm sort of thing inside and it sc screws the gear out, which engages with the engine and starts to turn the engine around and around and around and around until she goes bang, bang, bang and starts. How cool is that? All right, so once she starts, the, the, this gear disengages and your engine runs and this just sits there waiting until next time you need to start the car. So in these Toyota gearbox uh, starter motors, there's actually a little gear set here. So this motor can spin really fast and generate enough power through a gear drive into that there and uh, start the engine. All right, guys, I hope that was really interesting. I hope you enjoyed that and learned something. I'm Mad Matt. Stay safe on the trails.